Hello everyone, this is Ellie Ganim with EG Jules Lapidari. Did you ever uh, cut a cab and after you finished polishing you find this dull surface right on top of it? Well, you're not the only one. We all did it before. But do you know why? Well, in this video I will show you why and how to eliminate this problem. Also, if you haven't done so, please subscribe to our channel it's free and it's the easiest way to get you notified firsthand with our new tutorial that's coming up meanwhile I thank you for joining us today and please consider hitting the like button below this video thanks again for watching what I'm doing here I describe with the highlighter, uh, with the Sharpie, uh, two parallel lines along the length and two lines along the width. And the reason uh, to do that is just to divide uh, the stone into segment that I can concentrate on when I work. Uh, later on, you don't need to do that. Once you get the hang of it, you don't need that. I'm doing this just to show you. Also, as you could see here, the center uh, square down here uh, it's very important because most people they actually forget to uh, to grind uh, the, the the center they concentrate on the edges to round them off and they forget completely the center and what I'm going to do I'm just going to blank it up with black and all this is going to go away once I grind them just to show you that uh, what I mean by that and the problem with that is when you grind the outside and you leave the center even though it looks nice and shiny you actually didn't grind anything or you might grind it uh, on the 600 and you forget to do it on the 220 and what happened by doing that is you're not going to eliminate uh, the marks of the saw when the saw trimmed uh, or cut that slab you're leaving these marks here and if you don't go again like with every step uh, of the grinding uh, you'll have a problem and you will see it when you start polishing the uh, uh, towards the end when you polish the stone and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, the 220 grid and the 600 grid so what I'm going to do is I'm going to concentrate on uh, this side here and then on the other side the top and the bottom and when you use when you start grinding uh, try to hold your stone from the top. This you have more control uh, on it and then hold it from the bottom. If you use it from the back here, what's going to happen is uh, the grinding wheel will hold it and will grab it and it might go down from it. So this way you have more control, you can turn it around and one thing as I said before, you have to make sure that you're going to take the whole surface of the wheel. Uh, don't stay in one spot because you're rolling your, uh, your diamond wheel. Right now, as I said, I'm using the 220. I don't need to use the 100 because it's too rough and I don't need it. Okay. With the same amount of uh, cuts, I'm going to go and do the other side. At the same angle, being change my angle. All I'm doing is just rotating the, the stone and going from one end to the other. Here I'm going from this edge to the other edge. So I'm going between these three quarters or three margins, three segments. Here. Now I'm going to do the other side. But I'm going from this point to that point. Keeping the same angle. And remember, the narrow area is going to grind a lot faster than the wider segment here. So be careful. And keep an eye. So you got to look at what you did here. Uh, every time you cut, it's better to look. Because once you cut it, you can't bring it back. Now I'm going to go back and do the top from here again. Okay, 
And now I'm gonna go into the bottom one. And remember, the bottom one, we already have the 10 degree angle that we did on the picture. And we don't wanna grind it off. So we're not gonna go all the way to the bottom, which we already did it with the 220 anyway. So we're gonna cut just a little bit above uh, that edge. That looks pretty good. Now we're gonna go in and start blending the top. As you notice, we didn't touch anything on the top yet. Yeah, it looks nice and shiny. But we're gonna to get to that. And that's the reason I marked up the center. So you could actually see where he started. Now when you look at it, make sure that everything is symmetrical from every direction, that it looks nice and it's even. You can see like we still need to do anything on the center. Uh, most people, uh, they try to cut it to make it all round from this direction here and that direction. Sometimes you can't do that because of the thickness uh, of the stone that you have. This is here, a little bit thinner than what I normally use. Normally I'll cut them at um, but quarter inch to 516 uh, in thickness. And that gives you a pretty nice stone that you can actually round it uh, all around. Now on this particular one, I don't really need to round it off uh, and I could have a little bit of flat on the top. But in order to have that, you need to have a good transition between the angle here or the side into the center uh, surface or the top surface. At this point here, I still didn't use the 220 to grind here. And most people at that point, they're gonna go into the 600 right away. And that's where you're gonna have a problem because if you're gonna go into the 600 without touching this one with the 220, that's where you're gonna end up with the scratches and you're gonna end up with, uh, when you polish it, you're gonna see these marks. So you don't need to do that. You need to go step by step and you're gonna uh, cut it also with the two points. So this is what I'm gonna do. And just watch me. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go from this point, I'm gonna go all the way down toward the center and bypass the center. And then same thing from here. And that's where I'm gonna go on every segment as we marked before, so I'm going to go from here, here, there, the top, and every segment. This way I will not forget any surface. I will cover every surface of that stone. So, you go from the top, go all the way down, and you can see I already touched the surface. Now you could see the low surface is still black and the one that you're grinding, uh, it's higher point. And if there's no black here, you won't see it. But as I said before, with the practice, you will know and you will be able to see what you're doing. Now what you could do, see a little bit marked here and there, I would go from the center up like this, or you could actually go from the center and rotate it like that. And at the same time, you go up or you go down. There you go. And remember, I'm not pushing hard at all right now. I could actually see a little bit of scratches right there, down at this point. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's right there. And I gotta get rid of that first before I move it to the next one. Now, once I do that here on the 220, by the time I go to the 600, now this surface is all level. 
and the only mark that I'm going to have is the groove that the 220 uh, grid made on this surface that I have to remove with the 600 grid. Okay, now what I did is I formed the stone the way I want it using the 220. The whole shape is done. Right now I'm going to go to the 600, which just to remove the scratches, keeping the same shape and the same form. And uh, the other thing is to blend, when I use the 600 now, I'm going to blend, uh, have a nice transition between the top flat surface and uh, the edges of the corners. Now I'll start all over again. Just now the lines are gone, but just think of it as an imaginary line. And you're going to do the same thing. We're going one side to the other, top and bottom, in the same way, using the same transition of angle. And the main important thing is now we don't forget the center. Remember that the black was left uh, till the end until we completely remove it. You gotta do the same thing here. So just think of it that this black still exists and you still have to remove it. This way you got a machine or grind uh, the top surface using also the 600. Now this is only 600. So we did the 200 which we shaped the stone and now we're using we use the 600 uh, just to eliminate the uh, uh, the, the, the uh, marks or the grinding marks from the uh, 220 grid. From this point on, what we're going to do is we're going to go into uh, the polishing segment, which is another three wheels that I have uh, uh, down here, diamond wheel, which is uh, 1,200, uh, 8,000, and 14,000, and. Remember, uh, uh, polishing, it's not grinding. We polishing, we just not grinding. And if you find that you have a scratch somewhere, don't try to take it out on the 1200 wheels because that's not going to work. You're going to be here, sitting here forever. And that's not going to work for you. Uh, see a lot of people that they sit down for hours just trying to finish one stone. And the reason for that is they didn't do it properly and they think that the 1200 uh, grit is going to do the work for them and they're going to remove all the scratches. It will not. And I know that people don't like to go back and start grinding from the 600 or from the 200 uh, grit because, you know, it's too much work. Actually, it does not because this here, if you're going to think that you can grind your uh, stone on the 1200 or the 8000 you want and it's going to take you forever and that's it that's all you need to do now this is the 1200 now we're going to go into the 8000 make sure you got enough water and we'll do the same thing everything's repeated the 8,000, that's done. And now I'm going to go into the 14,000. And as I said, 14,000, the 14,000 is basically commercial finish. Okay, and that's it. So this is the stone right now, and it is done up to the 14,000 grid. And from this on, next step is polishing. I use sodium oxide for this stone. 
Uh, now you could use cerium oxide or tin oxide, depending on what kind of stone that you use. The majority of the stones will be polished by with the cerium oxide. Now, one thing you want to do is, or you want to make sure <clears throat> that you'll have uh, the the base wet and the pad uh, nice wet. This is just water. You spray it on. And the other thing I do, I like to always use a paper towel on my hand and you wet it. Uh, and the reason for doing that is I can clean my stone uh, when I polish it so I can see what I did. And also I need to have that stone uh, on the wet side because uh, you don't want to put too much heat on it. Once I get it going, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little bit of uh, sodium oxide, just shake the bottle because it's basically it's powder, it is powder mixed with water. And just put a little bit, not too much, and that's good enough. Uh, when you start cutting, the rotation of the wheel is in this direction, and I want to be going in here because if I go from the other direction what's going to happen is going to flip that stone out from the top and I don't need to get it off so first start with the edges and here I'm cleaning all that off just see what I'm doing and then you go from there into the center again when you polish I've seen a lot of people holding it, uh, the dog from the end. What's going to happen? It's this. What's going to happen? And if you're not aware of it, you're going to lose it. So try to hold it always from the bottom or where the stone is. This again, you're going to have more control, and you're going to get a better polish. Here one more time with water. And that's it. That's all it's going to take to polish it. This is actually the time it will take to finish a complete stone. So really, if you think about it, it didn't take that much. And the reason it didn't take that much time is because we went through every step. Uh, as I told you, we, we used the 100 grid to cut the outside and, and shape the profile that we need. We used the 220 to pre-shape the stone all around which is doing the edges cutting the sharp edge here rounded uh, the corner and blending it with the uh, with the top and uh, then do the polishing so really that's all it takes and so we went 100 220 to shape it the 600 to remove the grinding uh, lines of the 220 and from there uh, we went to the 1200 in between as a beginner use if you can uh, use the expendo uh, wheel use that to eliminate all the uh, rough edges uh, if you don't well you gotta be very quick and and make sure that there's no lines uh, on the surface then you could move to the 1200 uh, 8000 and 14000 and as I said, these three wheels are um, all for finishing, but not for grinding. So you're not going to remove much. All you're doing is just polishing the surface. Once you finish from the 14,000, you can go in and use the uh, polishing wheel, uh, which uh, the sodium oxide, and that will do it. If you like this video and you'd like to see more, please subscribe to my channel below. Don't forget like and comment. Also, if you need to see the full version of how to cut a copy shop, just let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching and see you on the next tutorial video.